Uh, thank you. Uh, I thought we'd just uh, a brief update, just to review of the results. Obviously, pretty strong profit growth for uh, the first six months. We've had quite a few trading gains, we've been in the money, so we've um, it's an actively managed portfolio. So we will turn over the portfolio. So we turn over the portfolio between 30 and 50 percent a year, on average, um, given our active style. More importantly, though, the number I want to point to is the dividend at 2.2 cents for the half. Um, we're now sort of starting to annualise our first full investment period of being fully invested. So we paid uh, sec the final qu uh, half last year, um, the 16th financial year, two cents. We did 2.2 this year, and that's hopefully giving you an indication as the sort of growth we're looking for out of the dividend. We're, we're going to be paying about a four, four and a half percent uh, yield at this point. Um, and you know, our, from our perspective, we don't want to cut the dividend. We want to have a progressive uh, policy. You're not going to get specials out of us. I uh, would rather save those dividends to make sure when there's a rainy day we can continue to pay out the dividend. Um, I might just go through our uh, view on the market at this point. As you can see, the, the uh, market's now at um, one stand deviation above long run averages. It's come up a little bit, but if you look at that number move, it moved down in the last uh, three months, that's pretty much all resource upgrades that have uh, driven the PE down a bit to as the markets roll through on spot. Um, Whereas industrials actually, if you look at some of the, the industrials reporting through the first half, it's been pretty weak actually. Uh, limited revenue growth, a lot of cost out to drive any sort of growth and a lot of misses through the period as well. So particularly for the top 50 stocks. So at this point, we're seeing the market as reasonably uh, pricey um, and we're sort of struggling to find any absolute real value. Particularly for the peak, we're looking at you know growing the NTA and growing the dividend, less worried about relative uh, in that respect, we're trying to protect, but when we get an opportunity, we'll uh, put all the money to work. Um, if you look at the portfolio today, obviously Woolworths, I'm sure there'll be a question on that one, um, had a decent first half result. You know, we're, we're actually quite surprised by the speed of the turnaround in Woolworths. It's been quite remarkable in the period of basically nine months. Mind you, they had to put a billion dollars of price reinvestment in, that always helps, um, to get the business to turn around. What it does prove to us is that the franchise value of the business is actually extremely high. That was our first, that's why we went into it initially, was there was this perception that there was no franchise value, that the market had become just very price sensitive only. Um, whereas our view is no, that there is a core cohort of uh, shoppers at Woolworths that will come back as long as the offer is compelling and the, the company is reinvesting correctly. Clydesdale, we've built a reasonably large position in Clydesdale um, as one of our biggest bank wet bets at this point. Um, we like Clydesdale. A lot, of the, a lot of what it can do to grow earnings is actually within its own uh, control. So cost to income ratio, get that down um, over the medium term. We actually quite like the pound exposure as it is, even though we might get a hard Brexit in the next couple of days. Um, it is a domestically focused bank, bank so less uh, impacted by cross-border flows out of Europe. But obviously, if the, Europe, the UK economy slows a bit, it'll be a bit of a problem. Mind you, given the pound's moved to 20 odd percent, Brexit sort of already happened in the, in the currency. Maybe we can go a bit more, but I, know, I just remember when the Aussie dollar falls a lot, the Aussie economy does particularly well out of the back of that if you're a domestically focused uh, business. So we still like Clydesdale. Um, Medibank Private's a newer position. As it dropped below 250, we established a, a reasonably large position there. Um, we're sort of backing the industry a bit. Um, some of the corporate players are getting together there, uh, being a bit more rational. We're actually backing the, the management more importantly though, given it's an ex-government instrumentality, uh, backing Craig Drummond and his team to uh, improve the service. Now, don't let uh, anyone uh, tell you that this is an insurance company because it's a community-rated system, so it's actually a retailing operation. So it's what you offer your members, what you can get for them, given your scale, which will uh, hopefully lead to an improvement in lapse rates. Uh, and obviously there should be an, uh, some focus on cost in the business and process, more about process, then uh, it should make them a bit more efficient. So we still quite like uh, uh, Medibank. Sky TV, that has not worked for us. It's been in there for about 18 months. Uh, last month, uh, the basically the regulator in New Zealand, Commerce Commission, uh, knocked back the merger with Vodafone NZ. That was going to bring a few things to us. Obviously, if you look at every other market globally with telcos and content or pay TV, AT&T took out DirecTV, they're now trying to buy a content studio, etc. This would be a pretty good merger. Um, VSKB is the same in the UK where they've, you've got a, a, a Sky TV-like business, a pay TV operator, which has done a lot on broadband themselves. So that would have done a lot. Now what has to happen with Sky TV, it's, they have to develop a pretty much a, a, a telco strategy. 
Um, and what we've seen offshore is what you typically get is the pay TV provider tends to protect the hub, which is the pay TV. That's where you put your, your cost is, the content rights. Now, don't forget, there's no any siphoning rules in, in your NZ, so they own pretty much the rugby, the league, et cetera, all, uh, all most of the sports rights, so that's valuable. That's one of the reasons why the um, Commerce Commission knocked back the, the merger. So apparently the uh, Commerce Commission reckons they're a monopolist, but not the market. It's trading at about 12 and a half times PE, and it pays about an 8% yield at this point, and the yield's easily sustainable. So getting paid to wait now, there has to be a few things that have, has to happen to the business. So it's a bit more of a one to two year story on, on Sky TV at this point. And finally, Suncorp, we've trimmed our position, it was a lot larger at this stage. Uh, we like the GI space, um, price, front book pricing on margins is going up, some pricing is going up on auto and home at this point. We're, we're keeping an eye on inflation though, claims inflation, it seems to be getting its back up again. Um, particularly on auto, given cars, the age of the car fleets is where it is, but the turnover is about a million cars a year. New cars are a lot more expensive given the technology in them to repair. Um, but what we haven't seen yet is frequency drop. Because of all the new safety measures, you should see eventually a level of frequency cl claims frequency start to fall because cars are meant to be safer. So we've got the cost up, the cost hit so far, but we haven't seen the frequency benefit yet. So we still like it at this point. Um, it was about 7.5% of the portfolio. It's now down to 4.5. pays a 5-cent yield. About 13.5, 14 times PE. It's pretty much on the full side uh, of uh, valuation at this point, uh, but we're hanging in there. On the global side, Deutsche Börse, uh, we bought a really large position in about, didn't take long, it's the benefit of running a smaller fund, uh, particular company. Uh, we built, bought it in about uh, October uh, and through November. So what's Deutsche Börse? It's basically the ASX, a very ASX-like business. When we bought it, we paid 14 and a half times PE. It was paying about a 4% yield, which is not quite unusual for a European stock. Um, it's Eurex, which is the futures business, Clearstream, the clearinghouse, and the cash equities business, uh, is extra. Um, we like the management. They've always basically spent less than their revenue, no matter what the market's doing. So very focused on cash, getting cash out. It's got a net cash business outside of the uh, cash held on margin for the futures positions. And obviously what happened in the last month is the likelihood of the LSC merger slash takeover has gone away given uh, the regulator in the UK has asked for the LSC to divest of a UK a tank clearing business uh, within two weeks. And the LSC said, well, we can't do that, so we're not going to do it. Uh, so now the, the probability of that happening has gone to basically 10%. So that we think the merger's off. But as it stands today, now it's trading on about 16 and a half times PE. We'll still quite like it, given that it's, if you look at the ASX, the ASX is trading on 22 times PA. Um, and more importantly, Deutsche Börse is heavily leveraged to interest rate volatility. Um, and with the ECB providing backstop in, global, in Europe especially with the banks, they can basically sell any sort of security for liquidity into the ECB, any sort of change in the curve or steepening of curves or change in rate policy, what you'll get is banks will have to start hedging again and obviously highly leveraged to any sort of change of volatility, as most exchanges are. So we still like Deutsche Börse. We think it's still fundamentally undervalued from here, even on an absolute basis. Uh, Icon PLC, I mentioned that last time we did the briefing. That's uh, done reasonably well for us at this point. It's now re-rated to about 16 and a half times. It's a clinical research organisation, i.e. they uh, run the uh, trials for large pharma and biopharma. So they're basically a body shop. They get out the, all the large farm now outsource the operation of clinical trials to these businesses. Uh, it's trading 16 and a bit times now, and it's growing its earnings at about 10%, which I look in the Australian market, I can't find a lot of companies that could do that. It's got a net cash balance sheet. So the quality of this one is extremely high. We still like uh, Icon. Um, at this point, we're sort of searching US healthcare because it's been the most battered of the industries over the last basically 12 months. Um, whether we're going to wait for any sort of more transparency in the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare being rolled back, or any plans for pricing in the US, not too sure yet, but we're looking at our preferences for more healthcare service companies rather than the drug companies themselves. They're quite simple. We like to try and understand what we're investing in, so trying to buy, work out if drugs are going to be successful or not, it's not our game. So we'll look for companies like Icon, which service the healthcare industry. Uh, we prefer those because there's more of an industrialised model to it. And finally, there, Bank of America. Um, it's worked out pretty well for us. We've actually halved our position in that, given the run-up. It's up about 50%. Um, still like it. 
relative to the Australian market, um, uh, the multiples on it's trading on about book value at this point. Whereas if you look at the Australian ranges, it's about one and a half to two point two times book. Uh, again, very leveraged to a change in US rates, which is starting to happen. Uh, but more importantly, there's, there's a cost out um, strategy by the CEO Moynihan as well, and we like where it's positioned. And there's a bit of credit growth coming in the system, particularly in corporate. You know, the animal spirits start start to take hold. You start to get some credit formation, and you know, banks need at, at a minimum they need some growth for that. Um, Next time we'll just look at uh, asset allocation. Aussie securities are at 63%. Uh, we've sold down a lot in the last six months. Um, the global now at 13% and a pretty high cash weighting. As I said from the chart at the start, we're struggling to find a lot of value in the domestic market and not a great deal offshore. Um, there are pockets, so at this point what we're doing is we're identifying quite a few businesses we think are pretty high quality, um, where any sort of pullback we're looking to initiate new positions or double our weights in some of our more favoured positions. So at this point, we're reasonably high cash. We'd rather stay there um, and try and protect the NTA of the business. And finally, just the performance for the last six months. We had a decent uh, one month and, and six months. One year, we sort of got burnt by the cash drag a bit uh, earlier on. Um, we, had, uh, we didn't have a lot of resource positioning. We had some alumina uh, in the position AWAC in the portfolio, and we had a lot of blue scope as well, which is, used to be a top three stock. As you can see, it's not even in the top five. We've sold a lot in the last month of uh, last year, took quite a bit of profit given our entry price. Uh, as it stands with resources today, we're, we don't talk about underweights, but we don't have, we still have Illumina as our core position. We have a small position in blue scope. Not much else really appeals to us at this point. Um, banks uh, at this stage look fair value to fully valued. Um, the market's gone from worried about capital, if they have enough, to not worrying about that at all now and living in a Goldilocks land of low bad debt charges, low growth, which is actually quite good for a bank if because you, you can generate a lot of capital. Um, but low growth for too long is not great for banks eventually. Um, the duration of the mortgage book means you have to fill the funnel in quite frequently, you know, 20 to 30% of your book rolls off every year. So you've got to basically fill the funnel, and that eventually leads to, if there's not a lot of growth between the banks, they'll eventually compete um, at some stage, which will put front book margins at risk. So at this stage, we're CBA 15 times. It's a bit of a struggle for us. Uh, we do own some Westpac, but not a significant position in it. Uh, the banks are still fully valued for us at this point. <coughs>